Monday night at about 8.30, I thought of one person and one person only, and I wish I was kidding, or maybe I don't wish I was kidding, but I am not kidding. When the cart met the blue tent, and I realized that it was serious for Aaron Rodgers, I thought only of ESPN's Mike Greenberg, who joins us on the Adam Gold Show. I I mean, I'm very serious about that. I really thought, I wonder how Greeny is doing, because I've I've lived vicariously through your summer, and the lead-up to this, and the excitement of it all, and the throwing, oh, trying to throw Bill Barnwell out of your studio that day when he picked the Jets last. Uh, are you okay now? No, uh, I'm definitely not okay now. We, we have been going through on my show <laughs> what the five stages of grief are because <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's over um, stating this. We are grieving, we who are fans of the Jets, and I think all – fans of uh, really passionate fans of all teams can relate to this when something really bad happens to your team uh, it is legitimate grief um and, and people are reacting toward me as though you know i've i've, I've had a death in the family I, i'm on the street and at the golf club and everywhere i go people are checking in on me to make sure i'm okay and offering their condolences and all i can say to you is I think I'm still in the first stage, which is denial, which is to say, <laughs> I obviously understand intellectually that this has happened, but I, I don't think I have fully processed it. I, it doesn't feel real to me. It just feels impossible to imagine that after everything that happened, after how well everything was going, after the magnitude of this, that it would end in four plays. Mm-hmm. It just... It just seems impossible. There were so many ways I could have seen this going badly, but this was one I have to admit I never even really considered. So, I mean, it's uh, the only word I, I think I can think of to use is devastating. And I don't know that it has hit me yet. Maybe it will hit me at four, you know, whatever, 25 <laughs> Eastern time Sunday afternoon when the ball is kicked off in Dallas and Zach Wilson runs out there onto the field. It's It's just, it's really, really, really sad, and I feel really, really, really bad about it. Again, um, when Mike Greenberg is joining us, I thought of you immediately. I actually uh, put out a uh, tweet. I wonder if, uh, at ESPN Greeny, your Twitter handle, uh, I wonder if he is okay. And then I went, wait a second, I don't want some of the schmoes uh, that, that yell at me to get in your mention, so I deleted it. But then everybody was tweeting at you. Uh, I believe Dominique Foxworth was tweeting from your house. By the way, um, I thought it was a missed opportunity Tuesday. You guys should have done the show from where you guys watched the game, like all in your pajamas, like because uh, it was a sleepover. It was the it was the greeny sleepover. I'm never going in that room again. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm not ever <laughs> setting foot. So where we watched the game, I had Damian Woody and Dominique Foxworth and – Dan Graziano, all of whom were doing Get Up With Me the following morning, and uh, Brendan Baba Peregrine, who produces the radio show, all came over that night, and my daughter was there with some of her friends, and my nephew was there with his buddy, and and Stace and me and the dog. (laughs) And there is, in the building in which we live in New York, there is a screening room downstairs that you can reserve. Like, first come, first serve people in the building, and people always reserve it for things like Super Bowls or, you know, whatever it might be. Right. And so I reserved it for this night and we brought in all this food. And I and, and I can, so that's where we were sitting and anyone who has seen the pictures and videos that people were posting, that's where we were. I can tell you right now, and I'm not kidding, I'm never going in there again. It, it is the scene of one of my great, like maybe years from now, I will face it and, and I will go back in and, and try and overcome that but that 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 room now becomes a place of devastatingly painful memory uh just sitting there frantically begging someone to tell me it wasn't true you know when when he first went down it didn't there's no way to know how bad it is but he was he, he wasn't writhing on the ground in pain so then they showed the replay and our first you know i'm asking the football players because you know how it is you work with football players they all recognize this stuff immediately and I, they were the, the opinions going around the room 
Was it an ankle? Was it the calf that he had the issue with before? Right. It was not until that cart pulled up to the tent that it really sunk in that this could be something way, way worse than it looked. And that was when it just went south, my man. I mean, it, yep. it just went south. And, and I will tell you that as happy as I was that they won, and, and I certainly was, and I'm incredibly happy for them, uh, those players, because you know, to fight through something like that and still find a way to win a really big game at home, and that was wonderful and thrilling for them. And, of course, I was happy. But I never bounced back. I, 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 did, not, I did not celebrate with anywhere near the vigor mm-hmm. that I normally would my team winning on a walk-off punt return in overtime against their arch rivals in, in the opener. Um, that it, it still was not the, the, the whole of the night. I mean, it, it is the definition of winning the battle, but losing the war. Mike Greenberg from ESPN is joining us here on the Adam Gold Show. I watched Dominique Foxworth on your set. I guess it was yesterday, still trying to uh, convince everybody that they could still be a playoff team. With Zach Wilson, they were nearly a playoff team last year, um, mostly with Zach Wilson, some with Joe Flacco, a couple of games with Mike White. Uh, But I think they won. They had a better record with Zach than they did with the other quarterbacks. Uh, What is your level of confidence that Zach might rise to the occasion and at least be good enough? Well, so it depends on what good enough means. It depends on what rising to the occasion means. He, he almost has to be better than he was a year ago. I know that they won a lot of games with him in there, but he was, he was right. so bad <laughs> that not only did they bench him, but his offensive teammates made up shirts to celebrate his backup, Mike White. And then when the season was hopelessly lost, they, their final regular season game of the year, when they had already been eliminated from everything, they chose to play a 30, whatever he was, five-year-old Joe Flacco Mm -hmm. instead of putting Zach on the field because they just couldn't do it. Uh, They would have been a mutiny. Like they just, or his teammates couldn't handle him. It it would have to be, but it has to be better than that. Um, Good enough is a relative term. I think the Jets are good enough to, even in the loaded AFC and loaded AFC East, make a playoff run with Zach Wilson. Yes, I do. Could I see them winning nine or 10 games? Yes, I could. But that will in some way only, I think, add to how painful this is because it will make it all the more clear that with Aaron Rodgers, this was really a team that had a chance to win the Super Bowl. I mean, you never know how a ball is going to bounce. Right when you start getting deep into this, and there are a lot of good teams in the AFC, but all anyone watching that game Monday night, everyone watching could see what you and I already knew. This was a, this is a championship caliber team in every way, but one. And, and they were exactly Aaron Rodgers away. And tragically they are once again, Aaron Rodgers away. So I think that they could make the playoffs. I think they could win nine or 10 games. But I don't see any conceivable chance that they win playoff games against Patrick Mahomes or Joe mm-hmm. Burrow or any of those guys with Zach Wilson at quarterback. Yeah, because at some point your quarterback has to win you a playoff game. There's You're not getting to the Super Bowl without your quarterback winning a playoff game. Although, I would argue it has been done. Tom Brady didn't have to win a playoff game. In fact, Drew Bledsoe won, I believe, the AFC Championship game in year one. But, you know, that's Bill Belichick and the Patriots, and uh, everything's just a little bit different with him. I think the Jets, what you're speaking to, the Jets showed just how good Garrett Wilson is, just how good Brees Hall is, and the addition of Dalvin Cook as running back, too, because ultimately that's what he is, and how good their defense is, and Quinn and Williams and all the other pieces uh, that they've got. So who do you go to? We talked to Jason Fitz. Uh, I know you know Jason very well. Uh, Jason, sure. Jason is now with Yahoo. We talked fa- a little bit of fantasy football. He suggested they try to trade for Ryan Tannehill. Um, what do you do if you're the Jets? Do you go trade for a quarterback? There's really nobody left to pick up. Ryan Tannehill, I mean, I understand what Jason is saying because right now all you have are bad options. If, if there were good options, then they wouldn't be options. 
one week into the start of a season. So what you're looking at is, do you want to see if some team is willing to trade a veteran backup to you? Um, why would they do it? Why would the Colts trade um, uh, 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 Gardner Minshew? Right. Why would the Panthers, right there in your backyard, why would they trade Andy Dalton? And these are guys who one would think will are there are, are on their respective teams for a reason, even with the young guys playing. So then you turn to guys who are on the street, Nick Foles, <laughs> Carson Wentz. Those kinds of guys are on the street for a reason because they're generally not good enough to play for anybody. Right. So I don't think there's any good option. If, if there is one or if, if one should come available, I think if they are treading water, if the Jets are keeping their heads above water long enough that we get six, seven, eight games into the season and we approach the trade deadline – and some other teams have fallen out of it or whatever the case may be, maybe someone is willing to trade you uh, a, a more legitimate backup quarterback. But that's realistically all they're getting. I, I don't know that Tennessee is going to be willing to trade you uh, Ryan Tannehill. And frankly, I think Ryan Tannehill is stinks. I mean, I, there's really no other way to say it. He gave away a game this past weekend. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm with not you. a Ryan Tannehill fan at all. I'm uh, I'm with you. Um, Richard Todd is still out there, I think. Uh, <laughs> Mike Greenberg is joining us here. Matt uh, Robinson is Matt uh, Robinson still with us? You I, I, I mean, uh, Ken O'Brien. Pat Ryan. He's still around. Uh, I was actually watching a video of Boomer Esiason, who now hosts <laughs> a morning radio show in New York, yeah. talking about this. You know, sadly, and I did find myself thinking, you know, Boomer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. We're, there are worse ideas. I mean, someone has to go in there. If nothing else, we can mentor. Look, I, don't, I hope Aaron Rodgers is going to be around to do this. One of the many huge mistakes the Jets made in drafting Zach Wilson was not giving him anyone around him to be a, a veteran presence mm -hmm. to lead him and um, to show him the ropes and all of that. And Rodgers, I think, was doing that. Enough so that I think Zach Wilson might very well have been ready to be the starting quarterback of this team two years from now. Um, but we don't have two years. We've got like three more days. So I would like to see them get someone in there just to do that. Um, and, and if Rodgers is going to be around after his surgery and everything else, that'll probably help. But they don't even really have that guy on their roster right now. They, they need to get someone just to do that. Um, and I, I hope I look, they're going to have to sign someone at some point, and, and we'll see who it is. I'd like it to be an experienced, uh, someone who has been through it all, so they can at least impart some wisdom and try and keep the kid calm through what is unquestionably going to be a, a rocky roller coaster sort of a five or six weeks he has ahead of him. We'll close on this because this is about the, I guess, the new Aaron Rodgers that we've watched, whether it's through hard knocks or just kind of following through the media is that while there were some questions from some teammates in the past about his leadership in Green Bay, there were none of those in his time with the Jets. So if this Aaron Rodgers engaged with teammates is the new Aaron Rodgers, he can certainly be valuable once he's able to be around the team again after a surgery and uh, whatever recovery comes from that, uh, then he can maybe help Zach Wilson through all of this, and then you just need somebody who is at least capable of playing. Yeah, look, I love him. I, I will say this about Rodgers. When, when they, I was all in favor of it, as you know, Yep. and they did it, and I was thrilled they did it, And but I was willing to admit, I may have said to you, um, of course it comes, you're, you're a little, uh, have a little trepidation, because we all know what the reputation was, and we all know how badly it went to the very end at Green Bay, and we all know that he had taken on a persona of someone who could be prickly and difficult and people were questioning his leadership. I'm telling you, he has been well beyond your wildest imagination since he got here. I live in this city. He's been everywhere. Yep. He's been with all his teammates. He's, he, he, you saw it. I mean, you don't yep. need me to tell you that he showed up in all the many camps and all of training camp. And according to my buddy McAfee, he hired a guy to sort of get him in the best shape he's ever been in. He was as ready to go as you yep. could possibly be. And his leadership was above and beyond what you could have hoped for in your wildest fantasy. 
So I, I will say this, if he never plays another down for the Jets, and I hope he does, but if he, even if he never plays another down for the Jets, I will always love him. I will love the way he came here. I will love the way he embraced it. I will love the way he, he, was, he was willing to stare down the, the, the challenge of, of all of the bad things that have happened to the organization in, in years past, be they recent or not so recent. I love that this is where he wanted to be, and I love the way he handled himself from the minute he got here. So he, he was terrific. I hope that he will be around them, and I hope that he does try and come back and, and is able to rec- recapture – something even with a, a devastating injury at the age of 40. I don't think it'll be easy. Um, but even if he never makes it back, I, I will always love him for the way he handled the whole thing. He did say on Instagram yesterday, the night is o- is darkest before the dawn and I shall rise again, uh, which I think means he's coming back. Uh, how many Aaron Rodgers jerseys do you have, Mike Greenberg? I have two, and, <laughs> and one of them is in a frame in the studio. I am actually, you want to hear how awful things are for the Jets? I mean, you want to talk about a, a, the worst week in the history of the franchise. So uh, Aaron Rodgers, of course, was, was our great hope. The greatest legend in Jets history, of course, is Joe Namath. Yep. And today is Joe Namath's celebrity golf outing that he does every year to benefit the March of Dimes at Beth Page out on Long Island, oh, wow. which is a beautiful yep. golf facility. and. He has it every year, and I, and I have been privileged to host it for him many times. I am, as we speak, in a car on my way out there to host the Joe Namath Celebrity Golf Outing Award Ceremony, at which Joe Namath is not going to be in attendance oh. because he got COVID this week. Oh, you're kidding. Um, so 80-year-old Joe Namath will not be at the Joe Namath Golf Outing this week because he has COVID. Now, everything I'm told is that he's... Well, he's fine. There's no cause for tremendous concern, but he's he's not here. So um, this is the kind of week where Joe Namath isn't at the Joe Namath golf event. It's it's hard to imagine spirits being lower than they are right now for our beloved franchise. Mike Greenberg, I appreciate your time. I I, I appreciate you letting us share uh, in your rehabilitation from the trauma of Monday night. I really do. Uh, at well, ES- it's cathartic, to be honest with you. I, th- <laughs> I think there is there, there is something cathartic about talking about it with people who feel equally badly. You know, like I, have you processed it? Like, like d- does the does like if this had happened? What I think I'm not grasping is if this had happened to any other team. Let's just let's just say this uh, this had happened in the year that Brady went to Tampa. Mm-hmm. The world was so mm-hmm. different because it was right at the beginning of COVID. Yeah. But let's uh, try and envision this same scenario having taken place with any other team. The way I would be thinking about it, the, the enormity of it, like the enormity of this story, because it's happened to our team, I think is just not fully sunken into me. And I don't know when or how or even if it will. Have, have you fully taken in and processed the yeah. magnitude of what happened here, Be- it, and it's because it's because of the history of the Jets. Is that not that we should have expected something like this to happen, but it's when it does happen, you just go, kind of fits the uh, kind of fits the playbook. Like NC State fans down here, the joke joke is we we can't have nice things for NC State. The, the yeah. Duke, Carolina, they all they win something. It's been a while for uh, for NC State in a in a major sport. It just it, something is going to happen to to get in the way of uh, of you know something like this. So uh, th- that's that's kind of the way I process all of these things. Plus, I'm numb as a Mets fan. I'm more a Mets fan than I am of anything else. I've been numb since uh, May eighth. <laughs> yeah, it's been a <laughs> Look, I mean, I, and, and I don't know that anyone in, in uh, where you are is interested in, in hearing about our troubles, but it has been about as bleak a sports year in this city, in New York, yeah. as, as I can ever remember. And look, that's saying a lot. We've had some bleak years, but the Yankees are going to finish last for the first time in three generations. The Mets are the most expensive flop in yep. the history of baseball. The Giants just lost 40 to nothing to their arch rivals on national TV and still somehow have the better weekend of the two New York football teams. <laughs> oh, by the way, the Brooklyn Nets look like a championship team. 
couldn't possibly right. go wrong. And in the blink of an eye, they became even more irrelevant than they've ever been before. It is a brutal yeah. time in New York sports. Well, you, this is a phrase that nobody has uttered probably in 25 years, maybe longer. At least you have the Knicks. Yes. I mean, they are actually right now probably the most on the most stable footing of any of the major New York sports franchises. And you're correct. It is. It has definitely not been in this millennium that we've had the opportunity to say that. Mike, I thank you very much for the time. We'll talk again. All right, uh, man. Write Always another book. A pleasure. <laughs> right. I'm working on it. All right. Talk to you later. Take care. Mike Greenberg from ESPN.